hang glider pilot's dream is to step off a cliff and soar on the wind. And in Hawaii, there's a place where that dream can come true, if you have enough nerve to take the first step. Now, hang gliders will tell you that theirs is a safe sport. And it may be, unless the wind suddenly changes and then it's not safe anymore, which many of them have learned with painful consequences. There's a superstition among hang gliders that after two years, they should retire, because at that time they might become arrogant or careless, or their luck might run out. The paradox is that to have the expertise and concentration to make the ultimate flight, soaring off Makapu Ridge, requires tremendous experience. The men Mike Siri met at Makapu haven't retired after two years, and the sensations they have in the air there will no doubt postpone their retirement for a long time. Okay. Have a good one. All right. This is hang gliding like nowhere else in the world. These pilots in Hawaii are on the extreme edge of their sport. 15, uh, 15 to 20 and feeling smoother. Down to 10. walk up to the edge of the box and your launch man is just about ready to let you go and get butterflies. It's incredible. Just take one step and as soon as he lets you go, you're in a totally different medium. You're actually taking one step into the air. Explosive, powerful thrust of wind that blows you up in the air, it takes you right out of sight, up into the clouds. And the feeling is just always the same. It doesn't matter how many times you've flown, it's always there. There's nothing on the ground that can duplicate it. This is it? This is the ultimate? Definitely flying is, for what I know now, maybe there's outer space travel, which I'm not even familiar with, but life as I know it, flying is the highest thing you can do. And you can't find a better place to fly than Makapu. No, these, these cliffs are vertical. They're just, the wind hits them and it has nowhere to go but up. It's like an upside down waterfall. You get in the right part of it, you're going to go up. Okay, how's the wind feel? Just try and get me a good spot. From the moment one go steps into the box and hooks into the glider, the action begins. Up, 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 up go. go. Ow! Oh, real good fun! <laughs> the launching pad atop Makapu Ridge is not the public domain of just any hang glider brave enough to try. It belongs to the Hawaiian Hang Gliding Association, and one must first pass a written test and several test flights off of lesser peaks before they'll let you give it a go. Because for 11 hang gliders, their flight off of Makapu was their very last. <laughs>
I've been looking for other places that were comparable or comparable to Makapu. I was in Africa, South Africa, and found places that did have high cliffs, but the wind just wasn't consistent. The trade wind flow is the most consistent airflow in the world. It blows northeast, 0807090, 75 to 80% of the time. And how, and what's the velocity? I mean, is it the enough? velocity is an average of 15 to 20 miles per hour of velocity. Whereas in the mainland, most of the average flying spots, there's a velocity of maybe three miles per hour to maximum maybe 10 miles per hour. Keeping the inherent fear in check is always on their minds. Fear can, can really be a big enemy to you because you're uh, so nervous that you're not able to think clearly. I mean, you should be a little afraid, but it should be a healthy respect. You should always have your respect. Uh, flying is very simple, maybe a little too simple. It's, it's much easier than surfing or riding a motorcycle or anything like that. Uh, so people tend to uh, lose that respect, and that's when you get into trouble. I think my first flight, solo flight off Makapu Bridge, I went off and a guy, a friend of mine, had adjusted my harness for me and he didn't loop it right. And uh, I got off and I was flying for about five minutes and all of a sudden I felt this slack slack, oh, oh, you know, and here I am lying cockeyed in my glider and the damn thing had, had, had let loose. It was my first flight off of Makapu, scared the holy crud out of me. So uh, you I came down and landed, no problem. But, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, I, was no, I didn't have any problem there. Each glider pilot performs what they call a hang check to make sure they're suited up correctly. Okay. Okay, pull the nose down. Lines can't get tangled up, and the hang strap must allow total flexibility. The control bar is their steering wheel. Pushing it out makes the glider rise. Pulling it in makes it descend. Leading to the left or right makes it turn. Feels really good to me. Steve Rayfield and his girlfriend Blythe Coulter discovered the high wind conditions at Makapu required a different glider design. So they set out to build the best possible glider. We've uh, been making gliders for four years, and we've made 35 in four years, maybe one a month. Each one of our gliders is different, and we have to think it all out all the way through each time. We never have made two gliders the same. They've always been different, custom made. This personal touch makes it possible for pilots to feel more at home in a glider hand-built by Steve and Blythe. Their sail work is just some of the best in the world. And the sail work is proven to be quite an important thing in the way it's sewn, the way it's put together, his sail design. And uh, his, one of his gliders are the first ones I've ever seen to be able to do loops. <laughs> It's sort of like process art. Each one is completely different and it's a, it's a product that's never going to be reproduced. And it, there's so much involved in each glider that we make that it's like an art form. Caesar has an art form of his own as he translates his feelings into a graceful but daring flight pattern. You feel very naturally uh, attached to the glider. In other words, those wings feel like your arms. And to me, that's as close to flying like a bird as, as possible. Have you ever been as fearful in an airplane as you've been in a hang glider? Uh, you can get equal fears in both flying sports, uh, surely. <laughs> Maneuvering a glider appears deceptively easy. However, these guys have painful reminders of the very real dangers of this sport. You have to accept the fact that it's a dangerous sport. Uh, 
Most of the people that have died have been young guys that were just flying for other people, not for themselves, uh, letting their egos get at, in, in the way of uh, their judgment, I guess. Uh, a lot of people have never had an accident in a hang glider. You know, I, uh, I have had accidents, but I deserved every one of them. I, I made mistakes, but you just, it's a very unforgiving sport. You know? I was basically falling down the face of the cliff trying to run down there, I slammed into the boulder about oh, 50 feet down below, dislocated my left shoulder, kicked me into the air and hung me from my back rear wire. So now I'm hanging out at 1,200 feet in the air, dislocated shoulder and I'm hanging from a rear wire. I pushed out and the glider continued to rise and somehow I got over the top of the cliff, came back around and landed up on top of the cliff standing up going, what? You know, what happened? And there was no reason, no explainable reason that I can feel how I got back up on top. It felt like somebody reached me, you know, picked me up and lifted me back up on top because I was very low and I bounced into the air and, there, and I was hanging. I had no control of the glider other than what my mind was thinking that I wanted it to do. Like I said before, you can't be afraid because it, it, it impedes your judgment. Or, or, uh, but you shouldn't be so, you shouldn't be flying for other people. You should fly for yourself and, and just enjoy it for yourself. If you're, if you're out there to put on a show all the time, uh, you're going to get into trouble sooner or later. And that's usually when I crash, is doing something like that. Steve Rayfield died while flying off of Makapu shortly after our filming. their greatest fear would be that of crashing down here on the rocks or out to sea. Not so. When you talk to these hang gliders about fear, they talk about flying so high and for so long that they never come down. This is Mike Siri for HBO Sports, and this is hang gliding off of Makapu in Hawaii. Ed Caesar and John Thorpe and the others who fly at Makapu are members of an elite group. They have taken the sport of hang gliding to levels beyond the imagination of most others. And at Storm Peak in Colorado, those who will attempt to set a new speed skiing record are also members of an elite group. And like all explorers, they have great experience, concentration, and the determination to exceed previously set limits. <laughs> 